Taiwan's military steps up training for its expanding fleet of drones. Legalizing this leafy drug is nothing but a pipe dream as the government cracks down. China's electric vehicles take center stage at this motor show in Bangkok. Plus, I'm here in Taidong, where street dance is helping bring more opportunities to indigenous communities. A warm welcome to Taiwan Plus News. I'm Ian Kavat. Taiwan's military says it's planning to build a drone training center to teach its soldiers how to fly unmanned systems. As Jaime Ocon explains, it's part of efforts to modernize the country's armed forces. Taiwan is on track to create what it's calling a drone fleet. An army of unmanned systems that can help the military with a variety of operations. But as more drones are produced, the need for drone operators is also increasing. And there are concerns that Taiwan won't have enough people to fly these systems. Taiwan's defense minister says the military is creating a drone training center to address the issue. Taiwan is planning to procure more than 3,000 domestically made unmanned aerial systems. But currently, there are only 210 drone operators in the military. The armed forces say they'll work with private companies to help train at least 1,000 operators. Drones could be a way of evening the odds and preventing a possible invasion. One of the things I can imagine is trying to really flood the skies with drones over an invasion beach in the littoral waters near an invasion beach to not only provide intelligence, but essentially to provide another sense of like constant threat um, to those invading forces. But analysts say that Taiwan will need to consider the different kinds of drones it will have in its arsenal when it comes to training its operators. Drones, like this mini helicopter, which only have a camera, are very different from this U.S.-made Sea Guardian drone, which is equipped with missiles. Learning how to take off and land, for example, um, takes some time. And also just learning how to operate it effectively, how to identify targets that you're looking at. Um, all of that takes some time. It's not going to necessarily be one course that fits all. But no matter what drones Taiwan has access to, without enough operators, they won't be effective, making the push to speed up training more important than ever. John Su and Jaime Ocon for Taiwan Plus. The Defense Ministry is under fire for its failure to provide mental health support to its soldiers. That's after a special hotline set up to provide help for anyone who needed it didn't work. Joyce Zung has the details. Carrying the weight of Taiwan's sovereignty in the face of an increasingly aggressive China, which has threatened to take Taiwan by force, the pressures facing Taiwan's military fall on the shoulders of its soldiers. Taiwan's military has reported more incidents of self-harm among its members, pushing the defense ministry to set up support hotlines. But when some soldiers called for help, they heard this. Hotlines set up by the ministry didn't work here, in Taiwan's outlying Jingmen and Matsu Islands, critical defense zones close to China. With the recent suicide of a presidential office guard still fresh in people's minds, lawmakers are now firing back. Records show the guard worked a grueling shift for days in a row before his death. The latest stats show only 14 percent of the personnel in the military's mental health centers are certified, far less than analysts say is needed. 
Though the threat from Beijing is very real, having professional help to get through the daily grind of military life is what's lacking. Uh, as for the hotline, the defense ministry says it should be working now. With their reputation on the line, the defense ministry has its work cut out for it if it wants to protect both its personnel and Taiwan. Alex Chen and Joyce Zen for Taiwan Plus. A visiting U.S. lawmaker has reiterated his country's commitment to deepening strategic ties with Taiwan. Republic Representative Jack Bergman made the remarks during a meeting with President Tsai Ing-wen in Taipei. Bergman is in Taiwan as part of a bipartisan congressional delegation. The other two Congress members in the group say they will meet with U.S. personnel during their visit, but did not say whether those people are military or civilian. Bergman also pledged continued congressional support for Taiwan amid growing geopolitical tensions. This includes a strong Taiwan maritime strategy and how we can work together on shared goals to counter China on their increasingly aggressive actions in the region. Police have confirmed that the shooter who attacked a government ministry building early on Thursday was motivated by political dissatisfaction. Authorities confiscated two guns from the 54-year-old man who is now in custody. He fired three shots in the Ministry of Digital Affairs, damaging the main entrance and walls. Officials say that nobody was hurt in the incident. The man posted on Facebook before his attack, making anti-government statements and accusing the digital ministry of propaganda. Cannabis busts are on the rise in Taiwan, even as neighbors such as Thailand have moved to decriminalize the plant. But as reporter Chris Goran explains, Taiwan's government is no fan of legalization. Long-standing restrictions on cannabis are being eased in many countries around the world, with some having decriminalized or even legalized its possession and sale. Taiwan is not one of those countries. But its use in the country may be on the rise. According to the Justice Ministry's Investigation Bureau, over the last decade, the amount of cannabis seized by law enforcement has increased by nearly 20-fold. Authorities have also recently charged a host of high-profile celebrities with possessing cannabis, usually in very small quantities. Just this month, the influencer Flora bowed before media and begged for forgiveness after being charged with cannabis possession. Punishment for cannabis use in Taiwan extends even beyond its own borders. Thailand became the first Asian country to decriminalize recreational cannabis in 2022, and many Taiwanese influencers have since posted videos of themselves using it there. But videos on cannabis shot outside Taiwan may still be illegal in the country. The Justice Ministry last summer released a statement reminding people that, quote, seducing the public to use cannabis by teaching them how to use it or spreading what they call rumors about its harmlessness is a crime which carries a sentence of up to seven years in prison. The ministry has repeatedly made it clear that there is no consideration of cannabis legalization in Taiwan. Cannabis use may be rising in popularity, but with heavy criminal penalties and barely a whiff of political will, it seems cannabis decriminalization in Taiwan remains a pipe dream. Kama Xu and Chris Gorin for Taiwan Plus. A visiting European delegation of lawmakers has expressed support for Taiwan as it deals with threats from China. And they're drawing on their own experiences with Russia. Louise Watt reports. Inside this room in Taiwan's legislature, a green alliance. 
A visiting delegation from the European and German parliaments is meeting with their counterparts from the Green Party Taiwan. They're discussing how to reconcile their traditional anti-war ideology with standing up to Russia in Ukraine and to Chinese threats to Taiwan. At a forum organized by the Green Party Taiwan, some members said that it's not enough to be anti-war in the face of actions by Russia and China. Rather, countries have to be able to defend themselves and guarantee their freedoms and way of life. And of course, we always should try to prevent war, but we should not let our friends alone when they're fighting for their survival, for their freedom, but also for our common security. The visiting delegation has already met with President Tsai Ing-wen and other officials, with their main mission being to show support for Taiwan's democracy. The visiting Green Party members also found time to raise issues that they're better known for, and were disappointed. They say they feel that climate change is a non-issue here. And they also spoke out against the death penalty, sparing a thought for the dozens of people still on death row in Taiwanese prisons. Luffy Lee and Louise Watt at Taiwan's legislature for Taiwan Plus. The Bangkok International Motor Show has opened its doors with car manufacturers from across the globe showing off their newest designs. This year, China's electric vehicle models have taken the spotlight as the country's brands attempt to bolster their presence in Southeast Asia. Rosie Greninja reports. A roaring start to the Bangkok Motor Show as automotive manufacturers unveil their latest glittering models to the Thailand market. Electric vehicles are center stage. The main attraction, a futuristic flying car made by Chinese startup Xpeng. The vehicle can be flown in China, but does not yet have a license to fly in Thailand. Before now, it has been pretty much fierce competition already, but you can see a lot of um, price war going on in the Chinese EV market. Um, for us, we are pretty confident that we are new and good option addition to the whole market because we introduced something totally new. They are not the only Chinese electric line on offer. New models from prominent brands BYD and Sika, among others, are also featured. Electric vehicles from China already dominate 80% of the Thailand market. Unlike their competitors from the US who aim for luxury, these EV Chinese brands are focusing on small, affordable cars within the price range of consumers in Asia, Africa and Latin America, among others. And as demand dwindles for EV cars in both the US and China, growth continues in other parts of the world, especially Southeast Asia. With Thailand accounting for 58% of all EV sales in the region in 2022, this Bangkok show is being used to compete for market share and challenge the traditional dominance of other Asian and Western models. We will start with at least 10 showrooms, mainly in Bangkok, and the step, step by step, we're going to expand our network to the other major cities in Thailand, like Chiang Mai. And China is not the only country revving their engines to expand their presence throughout the global south. Vietnamese automaker VinFast unveiled plans to sell electric vehicles in Thailand at this show. And they say they aren't concerned by rivals. We are very excited and uh, from the very first day I arrived here, um, I've been well received by the dealers and so far managed to sign uh, several agreements and we, hope, uh, we look forward to them opening our showroom uh, in the next two months and start selling the cars. With Chinese brands setting up manufacturing within Thailand as a springboard to the rest of Southeast Asia, the country is becoming the scene of the power shift in the region's growing electric vehicle market. Facing that fierce competition, manufacturers here at the Bangkok Auto Show are pulling out all stops to impress buyers with their latest designs to gain any advantage in the region. Dolphine Chen and Rosie Greninger for Taiwan Plus. Up next, over a thousand fish are dead in western Taiwan. But what is to blame?
this month's top hits on Taiwan Plus. Recognize these characters? Join us as we delve into their design, exploring the intersection of visual culture and identity. It's made to be enjoyed. It gives you an impression, and it's that impression. In this new season of Craft Soul, immerse yourself in the stunning creations and inspirational journeys of Taiwan's young creators. Hi there, I'm Dr. Aziz Muller. You're listening to the Ripple Effect podcast. Ready to make a difference? Dive into overlooked environmental topics and ignite positive change around you. Craving for more? Explore Taiwan's culinary treasures with Straight to the Source, a flavorful journey through ingredient stories. Vibrant and original programs, exclusively on Taiwan Plus. For more stories from Taiwan and around the world, download the Taiwan Plus app. At a time when the world feels more divided, a platform for diverse voices to come together. I'm Divika Pollan. Join the dots. Be part of the conversation. Connected where opinions matter. Welcome back. You're watching Taiwan Plus News. A growing number of people who recently ate at a Taipei restaurant are falling ill, and two have died. As John Van Trias reports, investigators have a number of ideas about why and haven't ruled out foul play. Seventeen people have now come down with food poisoning after eating at this Taipei branch of Polam Kopitiam, a vegetarian restaurant specializing in Malaysian food. Two of them have died, and five more are in intensive care. Investigators believe the restaurant's noodle dishes may be to blame, but they don't know for certain what was wrong with the food, and lab tests will still take days. Some doctors suspect improper storage created the conditions for a fatal toxin to form, but for their part, officials say they have three theories, and they're not ruling out any possibility. <laughs> As health inspectors and prosecutors gather evidence, hospitals are trying to save survivors. Patients include some from as far away as Tainan in southern Taiwan, people who had been visiting Taipei. On the streets of Taipei, there are differing views on what this means for a country that loves to eat out. But owners of other Malaysian restaurants and their regulars say the damage is done. With the investigation results still pending and the possibility of foul play not yet ruled out, it could be some time before spooked customers return. Scott Huang and John Van Trieste for Taiwan Plus. Now be thankful you can't smell this next story, as over a thousand dead fish are floating in a river in Taichung. Sally Jensen uncovers why. Picking through heaps of dead, bloated fish, floating on a river in western Taiwan. More than 1,500 tilapia festering under the blazing sun. <laughs> Residents are now protesting. The Environmental Protection Bureau told them the fish died from lack of oxygen, but it turns out they were actually killed by industrial wastewater. The local government says it won't shirk its share of responsibility for the environmental disaster. Uh 
呃责无旁贷吼，那我们就立刻成立这个专案小组，那会跟警法局来合作，那进行专案的一个呃稽查。A tofu factory is suspected of illegally discharging wastewater, polluting the riverways. It'll be fined anywhere from between 940 and 94,000 US dollars. But researchers believe the government could be doing more. This kind of pollution rate estimating to Environmental damage from dense industrial activity remains a persistent problem in Taiwan, and this latest scandal may mean polluting factories face bigger calls to avoid raising a fishy stink. Ethan Pan and Sally Jensen for Taiwan Plus. A Taiwanese child welfare NGO has apologized for the death of an infant under its care last year. The Child Welfare League Foundation had placed the one-year-old in foster care and assigned a social worker to monitor his case. Prosecutors allege an abusive nanny killed the infant and suspect the social worker of neglect. It's led to heightened vigilance for other possible cases of child abuse and calls for changes to child welfare procedures. At a press conference, the foundation's board members apologized for the incident but did not take any questions. They announced through a statement afterwards that the current chair will step down. The head of Myanmar's ruling junta says military rule in the country is temporary. Prime Minister Min Aung Hiang, who took power in a coup in 2021, made the comments during the country's annual Armed Forces Day parade. His government is continuing to lose ground to armed groups resisting its rule. He accused them of delaying a return to democratic rule. Japan is set to upgrade 16 ports and airports across the country as concerns over regional security grow. The facilities will be equipped for use by Japan's self-defense forces and Coast Guard. Over half are located in the southwestern part of the country, with one just 230 kilometers east of Taiwan. Japan has recently been beefing up its defenses near this potential flashpoint. The plan has already received local approval and is set to get the green light from cabinet ministers at an upcoming meeting with a budget of 230 million US dollars expected for year one. Taiwan's indigenous communities are known for their music and dancing, but now they're combining traditional culture with hip hop and street dance. Louise Watt traveled to the rural county of Taidong to find out more. <laughs> Each Saturday morning, these indigenous Paiwan children gather in a classroom in their remote village in eastern Taiwan to learn street dance. It's a rare opportunity to develop performance skills and open their minds to future possibilities. They're being taught by 46-year-old Kulasai, who's indigenous too. He previously worked as a choreographer for Taiwanese superstar Jay Cho and a backing dancer for Singaporean singer JJ Lin. Now Kulasai and his wife have started a school here in Taidong County to give indigenous children in one of Taiwan's poorest areas an outlet for their budding talents. Some of Taiwan's biggest selling singers are indigenous, but many of them were only discovered once they'd moved to one of the big cities having left behind their hometowns. Many indigenous communities like this one are in the mountains and far from cities, 
which leaves children with fewer educational resources and fewer chances to take part in extracurricular activities to develop other skills. Kulasai street dance classes also incorporate Taiwanese indigenous songs and dances. The word bai is an indigenous Paiwan expression of surprise. Kulasai and his wife Biang Tong have taught hundreds of children street dance and hip hop and say it's a good vehicle to integrate and showcase traditional indigenous culture. Step by step, this version of street dance, mixing in traditional culture, is helping children here develop not only their stage talent, but also their own modern indigenous identities growing their confidence to tread their own course in life. <laughs> Klein Wong and Louise Watt for Taiwan Plus. <laughs> Thank you for watching Taiwan Plus News. Finally, feast your eyes on these cherry blossoms blooming in Munich's Olympic Park. I'm Ian Kavat. Take care and see you next time.